I really should not be eating this because I have high cholesterol, actually, you guys. But, mm. also, hold on, wait, this is a huge piece of octopus. Hold on. <laughs> mm. Actually, I have a question regarding you guys being a part of O2's right. coalition. So, because you guys are a part of O2's coalition, do you guys have to vote for him? Well, what do you think? In my personal experience, um, there's no written statement saying that I have mm -hmm. to vote. You know, I, I don't re recall mm -hmm. when I joined my party saying that I have to vote the president that he chose. Mm -hmm. For me, choosing a president is quite personal. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, the president that's actually being endorsed by my political party actually fits mm -hmm. into my beliefs and values. Mm -hmm. So let's put it that way. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm not asking who you guys yeah. are voting. I'm just asking, like, how does being a part of like, what does being a part of O2's coalition entail? Like, well, it's a bit like, let's say, people always think that when you are you are in one political mm -hmm. party that's endorsing another, like, one of these, like, presidential candidates, that you have to sell these candidates, or at least you have to, like, endorse them continually. Uh, through this, um, some of us are so-called spokespeople, right. mm -hmm. and some are not. So when you're a spokesperson, of course, you get the burden of, having to endorse these, these candidates but at least for the rest of us um the unspoken rule is a bit like um you don't rain on someone else's parade yeah. so basically to put it crassly no they can't tell you to no, vote for they can't. but so then why like what's the purpose of there being a coalition anyway i think the the, the great thing of being in a bigger coalition is that it, it's quite impressive especially this election mm -hmm. uh that they can set aside differences mm -hmm. and actually come into some agreement you know mm -hmm. there's a set of values that mm -hmm. we resonate and um i think um the current president who's current currently yeah. um he he's you know he's very he has a good legacy mm -hmm. that a lot of the ministers that is actually part of the coalitions yeah mm -hmm. Uh, want to continue that for the better of our people. Mm -hmm. So I, I know I sound quite diplomatic here, but mm -hmm. it's kind of that's where it's going. And okay. um, I, I think I'm lucky and very honored mm -hmm. to be in that coalition. Yeah. yeah. So the whole purpose of there being a coalition is just basically teamwork. Yes. Yeah, it is oh, quite teamwork. It's quite interesting how um, if people need to separate the difference between legislative election and presidential election mm -hmm. because yes, it means we work in the in the presidential election. Mm -hmm. There are a lot less choice mm -hmm. in that spectrum. I mean, I've come across like some really astronomical figure about how much it costs to run mm. for presidency i think we can also look in papers from the previous, previous election. elections mm -hmm. speaking of costs <laughs> <laughs> good one in that's good like, one no that's why no let's keep it no no let's keep it real that's what a lot of people are you yeah, know she, secretly behind closed doors like we're wondering right like okay obviously it's no secret that if you want to elect yourself as uh, a presidential candidate mm. that's not cheap like that's a lot of money going into it right and that's the same thing not just here in indonesia not just in the u.s yeah. but i guess like every democracy right? right like there's you need capital to run things right even this show is not cheap i'll tell you guys that right now but that's presidential when it comes to dpr dpd dprd and also to just make it clear so Marsha from psi so she's dpr yes and um, jessalyn from golkar she's uh dprd correct i mean how much if you guys are comfortable sharing how much are you how much have you guys like shelled out like or maybe if not personally you guys maybe that's a little bit too crude to ask then how much on average does somebody running in your position have to shell out in order to like how, campaigning is not cheap i'm sure monthly around 100 juta ada <laughs> yeah just for campaigning karena mungkin gue jakarta ya yeah it's more yeah, expensive, more expensive. Jakarta, let's say yeah. i'm right. sure um so it costs about like on average like 40 to 60 or 70 million yeah. to run a billboard yeah in jakarta per month and do you know what happens some people i do find it mind-boggling that when i send queries uh, for like um spots available spots when it's with um, a party name I get a price that's four times more expensive than that. Four to five times more expensive. And I'm like thinking, okay, maybe it's prime time for you to make money, but don't you think four times multiple is too much? Mm -hmm. Like in Indonesia, there's this thing called harga caleg. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like um, when, let's say you go to 
like you go to a shop mm. in your party jacket. You buy like a bowl of noodles outside, like on the street. Mm. Maybe it's like ten, fifteen thousand. Mm-hmm. When you wear a party jacket, immediately it's like twenty five thousand. Mm. Yeah. Because of the assumption that you're loaded, you, correct, that, yeah, but, that I mean, you're like, loaded. Is that true? Is that a? I mean, we're, we're first timers, right? I, yeah, first time, but I do have this experience. What more? What Marshall thought about the the, the billboards? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. Um, my dad, there is this one billboard that we wanted to get in Pluip. And I'm gonna this person because this person I, is, I know, you know which one right? yeah, yeah. everyone wants yeah. that the blue it and then um, when I mentioned how much the billboard costs the person say it's around forty forty to fifty mm-hmm. and talk then, into the microphone uh, forty to fifty mm-hmm. but then when my dad asked because my dad is a reverend uh-huh. he said oh it's only uh, fifteen to twenty mm. and then that's not the only thing that's uh, bad dia jadi gini kalau ada satu partai udah ditawarin mm-hmm. dia tawarin ke partai lain juga mm-hmm. ke caleg lain ya dia better di situ mm. whoever put the money in quicker uh-huh. get the spot terus okay, pas udah di spot itu right. tetap ditulisnya di bilang masih bisa dihubungi untuk mm. uh, dipakai mm-hmm. so licik juga sih oh oke okay. damn ya yeah, that's... Kita sekarang main mainnya main talking to the microphone main di pinggir lah inti gue mm. um, also cost wise going back to the cost Mm. I would say I'm kind of like self-funded in a way mm-hmm. um, from like personal as well as like immediate family money. Mm-hmm. I think if you look, there's there's this one guy who used to run for off- who who was in office for about two periods, uh, mm-hmm. like two mm-hmm. terms, sorry, mm-hmm. for two terms or so for 10 years. And he mentioned the number was like 7 billion rupiah. 7 M. 7 M. For? For, uh, for a seat. Keseluruhan. Uh, for one seat in the in I think in uh, South Sulawesi South Sulawesi in a way it's been really scary financially mm-hmm. yeah to see that amount of money I think you said you were spending how much like 100 100 hundred 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 every per like, month per, per month, month. Yeah. Um, what even, was your amount again <clears throat> my office like I have like an office that I yeah. run uh-huh. uh, the office mm-hmm. alone costs about 60 million in salary. 16 million. Uh, in salary. So you do get support so, by your party? No. Uh, no, I'm um, like, how, are you guys self-funding your own campaigns? Or yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Self-funding, right? So self-funding. Like you shell out like 100 million a month. Yeah. That's fucking um, insane. Yeah. I shell out um, more probably. Yeah, DPR. But, yeah, because uh, you're DPR. But, yeah, but I, just to give like an estimate, I have like, people in my office and I pay their salary and that's already 60 million a month. I mean Marsha, I agree with you like maybe we're in a political party that gives us that independence so we're able to think strategically on how we run our campaign. So even right. though that's 100 <coughs> juta mm-hmm. come our pocket. I have people yang kayak misalnya udah lo daripada kasih gua duit, mm-hmm. kasih gua beras aja. Mm. Nah itu yang gue akan pass it to the people Jadi mm-hmm. gue terima donasi itu Jadi lo daripada minta duit itu Bikin lo kayak Eh gak enak Gue mm-hmm. gak ada wanna support Udah lo mendingan sosialisasi Lo bersosial aja Lo kasih kita uh-huh. kasihin itu Lo kalau gue gak mau pakai nama lo fine mm-hmm. Kalau mau itu yang penting Kita tetap bergerak kasih ke orang aja mm-hmm. But then that's a really huge financial investment Like I'm just realizing Like even for like DPRD Like that's yeah. like a hundred million a month And it's like It's not guaranteed that you're gonna no. get elected even, right? Yeah. So it's like, then it's just all that money kind of like goes down the yeah. drain essentially, right? If right. you don't get voted. Uh, sorry to all the crypto season bro, but so is crypto. Huh? So is crypto, right? So is crypto? Oh I yeah, mean, I, yeah, 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 yeah. This is how I try to like cope with it at the end of every day when I think about how much I have to transfer. Uh, right, right, so, of course. And yeah. I mean, obviously like I would... I think everybody here would assume that the both of you come from backgrounds of like, like you know, financial privilege where you are able to afford all of this, you know, and like not, you know, have to, like, it, it's not going to come at the cost of like food on the table for, you know, for example. Yeah. So it's like, mm-hmm. it's also the fact that you're even able to run for this is a, f- is a sign of like, yeah, financial privilege Correct. for sure. But is that a stereotype that, oh, kalau caleg caleg ini pasti semuanya kayak orang kaya kayak gitu tiga money to burn <laughs> they see I don't know Marsha I mean they see as a Santa Claus uh-huh. <laughs> I mean every time uh, when I do my canvassing or door knocking uh-huh. their perception I don't blame them yeah I don't blame them because it is a it's a culture it's a it's a psychological way of them already being trained by previous caleg or previous incumbents yeah um, so the first thing that I ask 
ya kasihnya ini doang mana duitnya mm-hmm. oh kasih gini doang mm. ah kayak gini mah susah mbak right yeah for me uh, you want to take it don't take it and it doesn't really bother me because uh-huh. uh, my way of treating this constituents yeah yeah if you want me to earn your trust yeah I want you to earn my trust too uh-huh. it's you gotta work you gotta work okay and if uh, you don't want to take my gift Mm-hmm. And it's fine, mm. but like that's just the it, it, it just get very uh the as we go into this deeper official season, uh-huh. the challenges get huge and huge and huge. Yeah, uh, like to be the crass voice of like a lot of people that mm-hmm. are probably tuning into this and you know might want to ask. I think a lot of people wonder, damn, you have to shell out all that money for the likelihood of. I mean, of course, like there's only going to be one. How many people are going to get elected? Four, Minus nine. Nine. Eight, seven, okay. Seven. Okay, nine. Um, seven, seven for a hundred and twenty-five. All, right. okay. all right. But you're shelling out all this money uh, for basically something that, I mean, the odds are, I guess for the most part, not in your favor, considering just like, you know, like mm. it's nine out of how many people are you competing against? Oh, right? and like, 50 something. Yeah, plus, exactly. Yeah. How many people are you competing against? Uh, 125. Yeah, <laughs> e- exactly. So I guess a lot of people, and even like, to be honest, like that's also my personal question of like, then why take on that chance, especially when the price is so steep? <laughs> character <laughs> development? Really? For, the I think for me, it's character development. Yeah. Okay. Um, I... I'm quite curious as well. It's a very expensive character development. Yeah, yeah, it's it, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, I think it's more expensive than even my university education. Mm. Uh-huh. Um, it's also um, uh, it's also I think I, I mean like I spent twelve years overseas, so uh, a lot of people I uh, ask me why do I risk a lot and jump into uh, national assembly level? Well, what I did apply for in the beginning was. To start at the provincial level, mm-hmm. like Jesslyn. Mm-hmm. Um, so you started off. I, I put my application in as provincial level candidate, mm-hmm. but uh, I got a call. I think I, I submitted my document at midday, and they call gave me a call at four thirty p.m. same day. Uh, they told me I should come to the central head office, and I did. And they just told me I was running for like national assembly and there was no question asked about that and i was like oh damn so you didn't even want to run for a dpr you wanted to go for a dprd is that is that yeah, it yeah they told me to do that but then uh, this was like over a year ago okay and i i was i, I was really spooked because i knew who had run in Very my strange. place previously and i knew how much how many votes she got mm-hmm. and that terrified me i right. was i was not ready to I, you know, like the 2020 to me was not ready to cope with that. I mm-hmm. think I was, I was just disconnecting from it for like a few weeks. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then like 2003, it kind of like got real, and yeah, I just tell myself, okay, let's see this as an exercise. What about you? I mean, all that all that money, and there's a cha- there's a chance that you're not gonna get your ROI. Got it. It's like uh, you are doing a unpaid internship. <laughs> a very expensive <laughs> unpaid, unpaid internship. internship. Um, you know, at the beginning, my parents already told me, Jocelyn, this is just learning. Yeah, you, you use this as a as a as you seeing how you can implement your mm-hmm. Western education. Yeah. Um, I've been abroad as I talked, I spoke with India. I've been away since I was eleven. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up pretty much abroad, and so. How much of my political experience in the states mm-hmm. that I can trans- transfer locally in in the country that I was born, I was technically raised to, mm-hmm. um, and it is a huge investment. But I need to go through this election because I don't know how my people think. Mm-hmm. I don't know their way of means of communication. Uh huh. Um, their level of political understanding you know uh-huh. i always try to put my what i know about them mm-hmm. before i came back here you know okay. so jadi kesempatan yang di offer ini ya gue mm-hmm. gak akan buang sia-sia gitu aja mm-hmm. ya, gue ambil terus gue pikirin uh, financial itu nanti gitu yang penting gue punya kesempatan bisa bener-bener mempelajari dan uh, learn that indonesian culture mm-hmm. yang 
a lot of people say, Jocelyn, you will never understand. You will never grasp. Mm-hmm. You, you'll you end up going back to the States. Wait, are you going back to the States? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> if, if, yeah, I, I mean, mean if she, yeah, if she don't work out over here, I guess. Yeah, you'll never know. Because, uh, hey, I, I spoke with Inda this, but like my life was comfortable there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we, yeah we lived yeah. good lives back well, in life the States. Is comfortable, but then at the same time, that doesn't mean that I don't want to stop fighting for what i believed in you know uh-huh. like my parents said why do you want to come back here defend a country and people who don't value you mm. i said to them things are changing now mm-hmm. you know it may be very pragmatic and very idealistic to say things are changing we can try yeah that does it's not wrong to try my mentor mm-hmm. actually met me in new york <laughs> Damn. yeah so met me in new york uh-huh. uh, i was still working i was working in a democratic fundraising platform so uh-huh. <gasps> Yeah, so, so I was in, yeah, Inda knows this. Yeah, I'm very yeah. heavily involved in US politics. But um the I asked my mentor, should I be working again or uh-huh. Do you think I should run? Uh-huh. And he was like, No, 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 you're you're running. Mm-hmm. Running where? I said that. It's like your area. Golkar never win there. Win that area. And I'm like, okay. So you dad has just went ch- okay, challenge yeah, accepted. Yeah, 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 just did I'm just like raw dogging it, but yeah. challenge accepted. And then my dad was just like, No, I do I do look. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. There's just that feeling yang kayak, oh yaudah, gitu, run aja. Okay. Then, you know, they do health and psychological testing. That's good. <laughs> yeah, 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 they do. No, that's good. That was traumatic for me. Because, you know, I wasn't raised here, right? And all uh-huh. the questions are in Bahasa Indonesia. Uh-huh. And so, that, it took me longer than right. what it is. So, uh-huh. yeah, but hey, it's a good thing. I'm not saying it's bad. Like, uh-huh, you uh-huh. have to go through that so you're mentally capable of running your city. How do you guys reach out to your constituents? Is it through WhatsApp? <laughs> like how do you I love like, that question no like because like, I'm of course darling what's up what, what's yeah, up no, like, what's up and visitation so you meet oh, them okay. right you go no down one ever, no one ever comes to my house no one ever whatsapps me <laughs> it is the thing makanya <laughs> karena lu kan tinggal di komplek kan hmm. lu di komplek it's so hard to get Beda, into a complex jadi, so hard getting into a complex mm-hmm. is like a privilege it's a plus point oh, okay yeah. I think that's why my party want me there <laughs> I'm just kidding because you're already living in a complex, yeah, complex right? You're so a complex like, kid, right? They always so, tell you an a complex a privilege. You know? But um, uh-huh. it's very hard. But yeah. if you want to go to the um the they call it blue sukan, yeah? yeah, yeah. You have to go through the process. Ada koordinator, ada apa, and that's how you interact yeah, through WhatsApp. And after lu blue sukan, lu ketemu mereka, lu uh, station house to house. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, Masagampang. whoever is meant to represent me in my you district is not d- is not doing their job. Yeah. <laughs> you should be contacting her now. Nah, uh-huh. you should be you should be getting Asking my number. Her feedback. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um actually speaking of power like hierarchies and all that, how much power does your party have over you guys? Like how much <laughs> how much control does your party have over you guys and the decisions that you guys want to make if you guys were to get elected? I think early on, I, I also mentioned like I'm quite independent from my party. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I'm very lucky to be in a party where in terms of campaigning strategy, messaging, they let the candidates to craft it themselves. Okay. You get it? Mm-hmm. So like, um, I I would say I'm quite unique mm-hmm. that I don't really see, um, I don't let the the party and the seniority mm-hmm. haunt me or make me fear them. Oh, but it's just I guess it's back to the candidate themselves. Yeah. Uh-huh. Seberapa uh, seberapa kamu mau involve the party or sometimes the party involve themselves to you. Yeah. But for me personally, I've been very quite independent in mostly everything. That's mm-hmm. why I don't really brag asking them. Oh, can you give me compensation? No, because in my mindset, if I if you ask me for if I if you give me compensation, that means I have to mm-hmm. abide in what you want me to do. Mm-hmm. That's just me, you know. Like, I guess specifically for you because you're DPR, right? DPR mm-hmm. is like has to do more with like laws and legislations Correct. that affect yeah. the people more directly. Mm-hmm. So, I'm wondering like since you're part of PSE, like so if you were to get elected as a DPR member, like how much power does PSE have over you in terms of like voting in certain legislations and you know all of that do, do you get what i'm trying to say Am I- yeah, yeah i do get it like how much freedom do you have in terms of like uh how to make your stance yeah because what if you want to vote in a certain piece of legislation that i guess goes against pse's values like are you at liberty to do that uh i think the problem is um you know like psi stands for like uh, anti-corruption and anti-intolerance uh-huh. and the problem is that I don't 
really go against that. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> so no, I'm like, like uh, I mean, uh, uh, corruption yeah. wise, I uh-huh. think you know, right? Yeah. I mean, like, I, I think, no, no, know, no, I'm, I'm like, talking about, for like, instance, like maybe Inda, like maybe um, for instance, um, there's in a way, like let's say I, I have to vote for like something one way, but I want to vote yeah, for another. Yeah, uh, yeah. Technically, te- uh, I'm not sure. I have to learn about the national level. Mm-hmm. What I know about the provincial level is that you cannot issue a statement uh, as a proxy if mm-hmm. you yeah. don't get everyone's agreement. Yeah, mm-hmm. so there's a voting in that too. And that's why at the end of the day, we have to be friends with whoever we're competing against because by passing like your laws or legislation, you need to have a co- like Everyone has to be in agreement. I want to ask you guys about your campaign. So like what have the both of you respectively been doing as part of your campaign? For me on Sunday, I can't be... Uh, I can't be touched because it's mm-hmm. religious purposes. Yeah, yeah. And then, so I maximize it. I go down to um, to my constituents like four times a week. All right. And then um, in different segments. Okay. Uh, and so basi- programs. So basically, you attend events to you attend events and you also visit people's houses. Correct. To yeah. basically market yourself as correct and do the programming that we we've already um, laid out for them so to do you guys have different programs or does everybody I have different programs i don't probably uh, we different talk about programs, programs. Yeah. is yeah, the programs, programs per party or per candidate per candidate i would oh, say okay yeah. what's your programs my so, program is, is baking and baking and cooking uh-huh. for a lot of the women uh-huh. and young people and then training young people to find jobs what's the uh mm-hmm. what's the goal of the program exactly God. so for the baking and um, cooking it's to help these women who said that they couldn't find a job uh-huh. and you know re- reminding them again you know the things that you learn in the kitchen uh-huh. can actually turn into money oh for sure <laughs> so don't you know don't say to me you 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 can't work you're not healthy enough you you have legs you have hands mm-hmm. you still have the energy mm-hmm. do it mm-hmm. i'm not gonna baby you and give you money mm. so earn it before you ask me something so that's the baking okay for the young one is because a lot of the constituents that i meet on the ground said that oh it's very hard to get a job now okay for these especially people who come from that lower income status group okay and so the one way that i help them is okay if you if you're having a hard time getting a job i'll help you get that training that you need Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to promise jobs for you, Mm -hmm. but you need to learn how to maybe build up your resume, how you build up your public speaking Mm. and all that. So I I give them trainings. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the last one is um, Sembako Murah. Karena memang bahan baku lagi menaik gila-gilaan kan. Jadi kita sebagai calon. Like underprivileged. Yeah. Privilege itu, karena because I come from that privilege, then Mm -hmm. I can provide Sembako yang memang buat mereka bisa mereka dapetin. Okay, so those are your three programs. programs. Okay, what about you? What what do you do as part of your campaign? Let's say I have nothing, like no events to attend. I will do like like for um, different spots mm-hmm. for uh, visitations. Okay. And so, Blusukan is Blusukan, one. Blusukan, yeah. yeah. Blusukan for different spots. And for the fifth one at night, mm-hmm. I would do like a coordination meeting or I would visit a community. To do what? Uh, introduce myself. Oh, socialize, okay. Socialize. Socialize, socialize okay. Basically. Um, and then there is also... Um, the so-called uh, kegiatan, you know, when you do more than just uh, visitations or door-to-door. Uh, that usually happens on the weekends and I usually schedule like four of them like a day. So you mean like you engage with them in like miscellaneous activities? Or yeah, like, yeah. So basically, like, uh, like what uh, activities, for, for example, example, I uh, the one that I do the most is uh, collecting like plastic. Okay. Um, like used plastic. Okay, okay. Um, it's actually, it was something I started in April. And by June, it was kind of adopted okay. unofficially into what a lot of other candidates in the party do. So now they name it like... <laughs> they plagiarized. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good. There are more people doing it. It's good for me mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. So uh, in a way, I'm kind of like... But, I'm kind of doing like a second stage to this. Mm -hmm. So I'm collecting the plastic, but you know, a lot of people just collect the plastic and they don't really think about where that goes. Mm -hmm. Um, I do. (laughs) Uh, It gets processed uh, into uh, biofuel Mm -hmm. and the biofuel is donated. Okay. So it's not going to end up in um, TPA, you know, in a dumping ground. Okay. So I, I, I kind of like think after, over a few months i think about it and then i kind of like refine it a bit right. more okay so those are your four programs um no no that's that's one, one. the plastic crash mm-hmm. there is the blusukan uh, blusukan is the it's normal a, it's, a it's a given it's a given it's like your job okay 
Mm. Blusukan means to visit people's homes if we're canvassing, and door knocking. Canvassing, canvassing. Door yeah, knocking, that's yeah. the word. Yeah, canvassing. Yeah. So, um, after that, I do, I train people sometimes, okay. like for, because I, I'm actually trained as a designer, and I used to work as a designer for 10 years, fashion mm-hmm. designer. So, I train people in, like ladies, mm-hmm. in how to cut patterns for making clothing how mm-hmm. to make patterns and how to cut them how to sew there's that there is of course the um you know the so-called tebus murah when you when you give basically um help to underprivileged mm-hmm. communities Basic commodities. um and when she does what she does like what jesslyn does running with ai i do it senam yeah with mm-hmm. the ibu-ibu <laughs> okay And then, but the native version. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a nam, and then it, sometimes it turns into it's really fun because I have this speaker, like this, yeah, like yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. this outdoor speaker that I wheel everywhere, and um, it often starts as senam, mm-hmm. calisthenics, mm-hmm. and it often ends as pesta dangdut. You like, should go. Y- you should jog with the ai ai to the tune of like Chinese music. Oh my gosh! No, no, no they do that. They do tai chi, guys. They do tai chi. <laughs> Oh my so god! So it's like um, n- n- no singing, right? Tai Chi is yeah. kind of like yeah, meditative music, <laughs> instrumental. Yeah. yeah, I'm familiar with your educational background. You also were in the international school system, just like me here, uh, yeah, up until are. you moved to Australia. Australia. Yeah, yeah, you moved to Australia, and then you moved to the US. Yes. Yeah. So When did you? How old did you move to the to Australia? So I was 11. So I was right. shipped yeah. to a boarding school in Australia. Yeah. Oh my god. So I was in Sydney. I went. I went to King Harbour Rose Bay. Well, this is free marketing for them, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I went to King Harbour Rose Bay. It's a it's a all girl school, all girl Catholic school. Uh huh. And then after that year, I took like kind of like a gap half year before I went to the states. I start at UMass Boston, and then I moved to Boston University. Uh huh. And then I did NYU. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And then what about you? Yours, uh, I could not. I I tried to stalk your LinkedIn. I did stalk your LinkedIn. You did see it. I did see bit, it, but still didn't make sense. I know you went to um University of Arts in London, right? Yeah. Yeah. But that's the second part of my R- study. So yeah. uh, when I was 14, I was shipped. Uh, I think three uh, about like half a year before, um, the ujian akhir. You know, they have this epta eptanas at the end of. Um, <laughs> Junior high. When you were here, growing up, did you go to like a private school or? Did I you... went to a Catholic school, okay. very an infamous Catholic school on Jalan Lapangan Banteng Santa Ursula. Hey, people, you should know where it is. I mean, like it's infamous because all the girls wear like since forever uh-huh. uh, skirts below the knee oh, wow. and very Catholic socks then. <laughs> up to the knee. Okay. And then you're supposed to wear the badge and you're supposed to not have more than one piercing per ear and it has to be two. You cannot just have one. Yeah. Okay. And all these things, you cannot wear nail polish. All right. Like super strict Catholic school. So that's a, so you went to a private sekolah swasta. Yeah, in, sekolah swasta. I went okay. to sekolah swasta lokal. Okay. And then you moved To so I moved to Melbourne uh-huh. um, just before I graduated. Okay. Um, so, so there was that, Melbourne. and then I went to Melbourne Uni. Uh huh. Um, I did commerce in Melbourne Uni for your bachelor's. For my bachelor degree, I graduated when I was 20. I went back to Indonesia to work. Mm-hmm. I did this thing. If you've seen me on TV every now and again, it looks my face looks familiar it's because I did this uh, pageant. Oh, yeah. Miss, which one was it? Miss Indonesia. Yeah, 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 Miss Indonesia. Yeah. So yeah, I did that. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, and after, um, well, I went to, I, I worked, and after I worked in a corporate, I managed to secure a place in London College of Fashion. Mm-hmm. So I went to London. Um, I did my BA. Uh-huh. Uh huh. In in fashion design technology. Was that your master's or? No, no, no. I had to do BA again because they didn't want to take my documents for a design course if I did not do a bachelor's degree. So you have two bachelor degrees. Yeah, I have two bachelor degrees. Okay. It's a so huge uh, word. wait, how old did you move to Melbourne again? The, the I was first time? 14. 14 and you moved 11. 11. Yeah. So you guys basically like that's your what your formative years, right? Were spent abroad. And then <laughs> what about vocational wise? Because I know you just moved back. Like vocational background here in Indo, is essentially your career. Oh, career! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Your like work background. Oh, work background. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not used to vocational, but um, 
my first political experience was working in Hillary Clinton's and Kane 2016 presidential election. So I did that with Boston University and I also helped um, Hillary for New Hampshire for mm-hmm. like yeah, so a couple got, of times. So you got US political experience. Yeah. Then I and then went. You came back I, here. I don't know if I'm going to say it, but like uh-huh. um, it was, I was working with a lot of the American Jewish communities. Uh-huh. So I work in a couple of their NGOs. Uh, I work in a couple of leading ones. And then um, that's where I had my interest in public service. And then I work in Joe Biden's campaign. So um, Biden and Kamala. I work with a political action committee mm-hmm. that helps fundraise for New York um, con- congressional candidates uh-huh. in the Democratic Party and Senate. Uh-huh. And then the Democratic fundraising mm-hmm. um, platform. And then back to Indo. What about you? When did your like political work experience start um so i know you have more i don't know i mean belt. like so i did i mentioned earlier i went to the beauty pageant mm-hmm. and i met this guy who unknowingly became my mentor he's dead now but anyway his name was wimar with mm-hmm. and um unknowingly he trained me on like how to deal with public angry public online mm-hmm. uh how to put across my thoughts Uh uh-huh but your own personal political work experience started like is this your first time this is my first time running for myself okay so the but i did help other people run for themselves ah okay i don't know how much this applies to you marcia because granted i I, we we Mm -hmm. literally just met i don't know Mm -hmm. you on a personal level that well Mm -hmm. i know you better on a personal level and like people like you and me we don't come from a very Mm -hmm. local background Uh you know what i mean so it's like has that ever been like an issue for for you and like can people can people tell because i'm gonna be so fucking honest people can tell that i'm not from here yeah 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 you know yeah. like people can tell there's like there's something a little bit off like even when right. i do speak in indonesian you know they can tell that it's like you're not really like indo indo like you're not really indo indo not in like a racist way because like yeah. oh you chi not like no, no yeah. not not in that type of way but as in to say like yeah. there's a little bit of like a foreign vibe with me right. and people tell me that i wonder if like is, is that a thing with I get that you? in terms of like uh, my campaign as well. I mean, uh-huh. even with my family, mm-hmm. my family friends and all that, they don't see me as Indo Indo. Uh-huh. So they're like, "Udah kamu tuh nggak ngerti." So when you're blue sukan, like, can they do they get that vibe from you? It's like, oh, you're not really from here, are you? Uh, not really. Yeah, but you're blue sukan with Ai Ai, right? You are no, no, there. No. Uh, I have also like uh, okay, okay. The, okay. with the with that social economic class with the middle upper mm-hmm. i don't have an issue okay but with the lower mm-hmm. class right um i tend to use really basic terms okay yeah and then ah. i i kind of use that time to l- listen to them okay so that's kind of like showing respect as well you know you, yeah. don't, you don't just blabber and then i tend to speak also english with them <laughs> i think you make a very interesting point about it's the the social economic aspect mm-hmm. of it I, I often hear the sentiment of people going like why is it all these rich people running for chalex and like can do you, do you see i i see where they're trying to go with it where it's like how confident are we in a but how confident are we in all of these chalex that more often than not you guys come from more well off social economic backgrounds and how well are you guys going to be able to really relate to the average everyday Indonesians, like your constituents who, you know, most likely, like most people don't come from your type of background. You make a very interesting point. So it's like, again, I don't know how much this Mm -hmm. applies to you, but with you especially, it's not just the money aspect. It's not even just the racial aspect because we're both Chinese. Right. Right. It's not just the money aspect. It's the racial aspect. And on top of that, it's also the aspect of your upbringing because you were pretty much raised abroad right yeah so like that's why i say in the beginning like you're spending a lot of money what is this it's like a it's really an unpaid internship it's an experience you know Mm -hmm. and so for (laughs) for the middle to the upper class they always question me Mm -hmm. why jesslyn why dprd why running as a candidate your skills you're supposed to be in the diplomatic field you're supposed Mm -hmm. to be in the international stage yeah why waste your time with these people Uh and then but then when i go when i say like i said to them like well I just truly love and care about trying to learn the uh, learn my my people in general, you know, not just mm-hmm. um, always s- sub- always segmenting myself to just one social group. Right. And then when I meet people in Blusukan, I don't know since dari gue awal turun sampai sekarang, mm-hmm. they always welcome me. Dan mereka selalu nggak pernah lihat gue kayak oh you're rich. Uh, apa you and I are different. Mm-hmm. Ada berapa instances lah ya. Mm-hmm. Ada berapa instances. 
tapi tetap kayak dari cara pembicaraan kita dan mungkin karena it's very basic it's very uh, I tend to keep it personal as well mm-hmm. jadi there is no sense of barrier in that mm-hmm. and then uh, I don't know if you go through this but mm-hmm. uh, when you meet like older women especially the the people in the lower if you do You, you, I touch a lot like I, I personally like you know when you touch you communicate touch with them like which that which is like a, to be honest that's like a very western yeah thing. western yeah yeah and, and they're not used to it but then they're in my campaign they get used to it and I don't know they're, they're like that's interesting yeah they, and like they, they and then when I talk to them they ended up crying sometimes uh-huh. so uh, through that physical and like eye contact and communication it's like you're giving your your full attention to them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so that's like breaking every barriers that right in from that western right in that yeah. right i guess it's like i don't know i had actually i had this conversation with ananda mm-hmm. um where because he and i we were talking about how a lot of these politicians mm-hmm. and Are you guys called politicians? Are you? Would you guys? I, 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 not yet for me, though. Not, not yet, right? Uh, yet or not yet? Not yet I don't not know. Yet, not, not yet. 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 Probably well, like, for political me, candidates. I mean, that's yeah. It. yeah, yeah. But you know, he and I, we were talking about how all of, a lot of these political candidates, like for example, there's this one party. Obviously, I can't mention it, but I think they're pretty well known for like this family, like super omega rich family, and like all oh, of them are just. I like, know who you're yeah, talking about. All of them are just running in this like one particular party, uh, and it's like you know who I mean. You were talking about. The was all. Like super rich, mega rich. I was like, yeah, there are a few of them, and then all. I was like, ah, right, right, right. One. But oh, see, in the- <laughs> yeah, but, but do you see? Do you see what I mean? It's like a lot of these political candidates are all of these. I'm so sorry, kayak artis artis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, like they are vote getters in a way because obviously, um, if you're more famous, people, if at least if they don't know who to choose, right, they will choose you. Uh-huh. That is how. That is the logic Popularity in a way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Electability because yeah. their their name are familiar. Mm. Right. Yeah. But at the same time when you I mean like we are mm. not really famous are we? No, no. Uh, so um, in a way um, that forced us from very early yeah. on to work like mm-hmm. to do the canvassing to meet people. Work our ass off. Uh, like, really. Just, just right, to yeah. meet like I think I don't know how like I, I printed at least Over fifteen or over fifteen thousand name cards, mm-hmm. I've given them away. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. maybe more yeah. like now in the twenty something yeah. thousand right. cards, and um, that means those like I've shaken hands with those that many people mm-hmm. in the past year, mm-hmm. and yeah, no kidding. Like, yeah. uh, so it's um, I it's. You know, like um, there are strategies yeah, they to are. get like so, votes by having like really popular public figures. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, it doesn't guarantee that they will get. The They'll vote. get the seat. Oh yeah, of course. And like yeah. that wasn't really the point that I was trying to make. Yeah. Like the but the uh, the relatability, right? Yeah. Like um, I I don't really have difficulty. I mean, yeah. maybe it's just me who is mm-hmm. really flexible. My mom was. Yeah. I I don't feel like I have a lot of friends, but my mom told me. Oh, you know, Marsha, she has friends everywhere. And I was like, probably it's whenever she goes somewhere, I will have like a new set of friends that I will introduce to her. Mm-hmm. So she thinks I have a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. So in a way, I don't really feel I have a lot of difficulty. Okay. Because I do connect with people quite easily. Right. So it's just, um, I don't think language is the barrier. I mean, mm-hmm. there are moments when uh-huh. people will talk slang and I'll be a bit like, uh, right. uh, I'm missing a point yeah. here. Uh-huh. But it's uh, when yeah. you touch the emotions of people, oh, yeah. when yeah. you touch mm-hmm. their everyday, it matters more oh, than yeah. a figure you see all the time, but you cannot touch. Right. Yeah, because what I was talking about with Ananda is, would you rather have somebody who's you know like for example like this omega rich so like, mm. famous person who's like completely out of touch from the realities mm. of the average everyday person mm-hmm. like they can't like there's really little for them to be able to relate yeah. to their constituents but that they have the heart and the passion to want to be able to relate Correct. to them right and to you know be willing to go like to work on the grounds and like you know actually passionate about making a change in the lives of their constituents versus somebody who let's say yeah they come from the average like they're the quintessential representative Correct. of their constituents for example um you know very strong on the relatability yeah. aspe- aspect but you know what if they're like yeah. corrupt and Correct. 
do you, do you see what I'm trying to yeah. say? Mm-hmm. I'm not really like wording myself. No, no, no. Articulately, it, it, it makes sense. But makes sense. yeah, yeah. So that's why he he and I we were talking about. It's like you know what would you rather? And I feel like we are coming. I think most people I think are starting to realize that. Well, I don't know if it's most people actually, but I th- I feel like enough people are starting to realize that I would much rather. To put it crassly, vote for us, like some rich princess that's like you know like live in a mansion and like are completely out of touch with reality. But if she can bring about change that can positively impact my life, like I would you know much prefer that than like you know uh, the average, mm-hmm. the average yeah. Indonesian who like yeah lives the average Indonesian lives, but then like they probably have some like hidden <laughs> agenda underneath and you know screws me over right. you know it's so passion but, versus money. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah. There's the, also that. There is also the few uh, that. If you are running for office, then you have money. If you have money, then you're not supposed to mm-hmm. want more money from your job. But you know, greed. Yeah, it doesn't. Greed is not eliminated when you have money. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it still depends on the internal motivation of each candidate. Yeah, I mean, like, this is like, it's you know, it's hard because, again, I I don't think it's yeah, greed. You know, it's also a mixture with how competent are you? How yeah. good are you uh-huh. um, to be a politician? You and know? a lot of people yeah. have questions about that. Like, what does define a competent politician? Because right now, we're kind of living in this weird age where anybody can become a politician all of a sudden. And for me, that started with realizing that, oh my God, Donald Trump is... <laughs> do you rem- oh my God, do you remember? It was like, all of a sudden, it's like this former reality TV star, fucking like real estate conglomerate, like... I, I wonder, ultra omega rich white man <laughs> I, know, I wonder whether no. this is what my parents felt when they saw Ronald Reagan running for office yeah I can't remember Ronald Reagan's background yeah. oh well like, you were were uh, you so born in the 80s, 80s. <laughs> in the 80s I don't okay. think, yeah, I don't think we were born yet oh, okay you know. yeah that probably explains it but like for example with you know Donald, it started with Donald Trump in the US and then now you see like Vivek Ramaswamy who's like a fucking like he's not a politician he's a fucking businessman right you see all these businessmen and like I think there's one other candidate Nikki Haley oh wait never yeah. mind no not mm-hmm. Nikki Haley there's like this one other lady um, from the Democratic Party Nikki Haley something is Republican um, Marion Marion yeah Marion oh, Kennedy yeah. Uh, no no Marion something that woman and she's yeah. she doesn't have any political backgrounds mm-hmm. and so I mean, that's examples from the U.S., but even here in Indonesia, it's like, okay, again, I'm sorry, but it's like our political candidates are a bunch of Correct. artists, artists, kayak celebgram, sama, like rich business people, kayak gitu. Mm. It's like with no like proper, I guess, political mm. experience or like a, a background that makes sense as to why they're in politics. And I'm not saying this in your detriment, by so the way, right? But I'm just like voicing out what a lot of people behind closed doors like normally say when they mm-hmm. talk about political candidates um, but at the same time I do wonder like what defines a competent political candidate anyway because like I said I would much rather somebody with zero political experience however way you want to define that but they're genuinely passionate about bringing forward positive change as opposed to somebody who I don't know like they've been like doing like can like grassroots canvassing and like you know political science major like they have all of the you know, on paper, the credentials that would, I guess, make them seem like mm-hmm. they're great candidates, but in reality, they're corrupt or they're, I don't know, just like shit in right, right. general. So it's like, how would you guys, how, like, how would you guys define, like, what makes a competent political politician anyway? I think it's the ability to bring about consensus, to yeah, so m- to take difficult decisions. Yeah. If you can make people, like, if you can convince people who normally don't agree with you to agree with you on, on a topic, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people to agree with you on a topic and to bring about that change, I think you can call yourself a successful politician. I mean, like, I'm not just saying about mm-hmm. what burger to eat, but more mm-hmm. like um, policies, like uh, policies that affect the uh, livelihoods of all of us mm-hmm. here. So, for example, um, can you bring about a consensus in increasing the use of sustainable energy? Mm-hmm. Like in how, uh, how many percent and how to do it? I mean, like how to bring, how to make people who normally don't agree that, let's say, I mean, I'm pro-solar power, um, who don't normally agree to have like um, legalized um, on-grid solar panel to mm-hmm. agree with it. I mean, that's so the art, persuasion. Right? persuasion skills 
Um, Which I agree with, like, you know. Kind of, be a- but not really, because sometimes you cannot persuade. Sometimes it's, there are difficult decisions to be taken, and you got to convince someone to take the bitter pill. Mm-hmm. What about you? What do you think? Well, <laughs> good and competent. I think one of the... You know, you know To Kill a Mockingbird, right? Of course. Uh, to God. Kill a Mockingbird. I fucking hated that book uh, back in high yeah, school, but yeah, go yeah, on. You hate that. Yeah, well, well, that was a long haul, but I think one thing that always draws me until today, I think it was really relevant, is that to put yourself in that other person's shoe. Mm-hmm, yeah. Empathy. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. At the same time, like some level of experience is, is, is helpful, but it's not everything. Yeah. yeah. I'm wondering more on like so, a cultural yeah. level, like how much do you guys resonate with like the local culture, especially as like the both of you didn't, you guys didn't really grow up here. So like how much of like Indonesian culture do you guys like resonate with? Ooh, the Japanese one is the hottest one. The Japanese culture, you know? Yeah. I mean, not only, uh, we're chindos, you know? Yeah. So it's like there's the, the chindos culture yeah there's the abroad culture and mm-hmm. trying to kind of mix that and then now blusukan is a different culture again uh-huh jadi nge-balance itu ya it, it, it butuh adjustment adapting kadang ya we have to set aside that uh western mindset bluntness misalnya mm-hmm. being very blunt i'm yeah. very i mean inda and i maybe share the same thing yeah we, we talk without thinking sometimes <laughs> you know, i don't think i mean you know what i mean right yeah like, yeah we we're just, more impulsive yeah impulsive there you go impulsive yeah. the right word So that kind of thing, lo nggak bisa ngelakuin itu ke, ke keluarga. Mm. Baper nanti. Yeah, yeah, you Sakit can't. Hati, kan? Yeah, you can't really apply yeah. that to the local context. And Jadi, like, I guess that's what I'm like asking is like yeah. how much of your foreign upbringing. Well, I guess you've been here for a while, right? So like uh, that's yeah. probably like well, you. I think I will just really. go back to the first, um, the first two years I came back after 12 years overseas. Technically, yeah, so that was. I was so angry all the time mm-hmm. because uh, things like, let's say, um, uh, waiters who would like chat among themselves. Because I actually I used to work as a waiter part time mm-hmm. um, back in uni, so uh, I felt like they were not doing their job. And if I were paying them serious money, because obviously when you have waiter mm-hmm. and waitresses, they in the kind of like the privilege country circle that we move about in um they do earn quite a bit mm-hmm. but it felt a bit like you know i was working my ass my ass off harder than you did and i was living hand to mouth every single month and i was paying attention to people and you're not even paying attention to me and there were like four of you you know i was there were only two of us you know It was. It felt. You know. I was angry. Actually, a lot of the time I was angry because things that I felt uh, should have been done one way didn't go well the other. Uh, and I, I think for you, that's probably a difficult thing to do because you're not supposed to show your anger, right? Yeah. When you're doing a, a blue sukan. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're not about. So, you're not allowed to be confrontational. <laughs> yeah, you're not allowed. And yeah. I think the most hard for me to take until today is still adjustment. The premanis, uh, premanisme of oh politik Indo. Mm-hmm. Oh, the premanisme or the jiwa pengemis. Yeah, dua-duanya. Mm-hmm. Jadi uh, itu yang you know I'm so used to following law by law. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, kan? by sy- systematically and like. You know, everything. if you say A, then do A. Yeah. If you say B, then yeah. do B. Yeah. Do you know uh, things get uh, mixed up with when it comes to money? You know, mm-hmm. and so. That's where I think again, you know, I'm not going to talk about education or anything. It's just that culture is so embedded mm-hmm. generation by generation mm-hmm. that as incoming like maybe hopefully if I win or as a child, like, mm-hmm. it's a huge adjustment not just someone who study abroad but even those who maybe just enter the unless if you have a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can swing it away with a good pock of right, yeah. Money. And mm-hmm. like all the hard work that we do, yeah. I mean, it's swift like that. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, even though we tell them all the time, like you mm-hmm. know, would you rather have a child, uh, an anggota legislative who comes to see you every day, but now he or she cannot give you money, mm-hmm. or someone who gives you money now but will not take care of you for the next five years? Mm-hmm. Thank you, Marsha. Um, you know, yeah, you, Thank you. not yeah. being taken care of. Hello. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And yeah. honestly, constituents tend to take the I want the money now instead of the longer term. Yeah, yeah. There um, you go. Short, 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 short term. Yeah, yeah, short term investment versus the 
the itu. short term gain versus long term access yeah. to um, services I yeah. would say mm-hmm. itu budaya tuh harus berubahin yeah for sure no and speaking of like cultures that you want to berubah I guess like I guess coming back again to like mm. all of us here like we come from like international education mm. backgrounds and like well and international backgrounds considering like we used to live abroad right mm. and I guess like I relate a lot with what you said about first coming back here and being very angry mm. because you're used to certain things like you have certain views and ideals of like how mm-hmm. the world should be and how people should be and then mm-hmm. like you come back here and people don't do that and you're uh, like yeah, what the fuck is wrong with you including your family including your families oh the most hurtful one that is yeah. That. yeah hmm have families families and oh, yeah. Yeah. close friends uh, I, coming back yeah. here I think the all three of us we can attest to how it's like the first time you come back here is a cultural adjustment mm. it's like a really huge cultural adjustment um but I wanted to have a conversation about what parts I um hold on wait what's the question here how <laughs> what parts of your international education or experience that you're most passionate about bringing back to indonesia i guess if there's any because you know how i i guess just like a bit of a reflection of like what my international education has meant to me i think the beauty of kids that come from our type of academic educate uh, ac- mm. uh academic backgrounds and kids like us that have lived abroad you know the beauty of all of that is that we've had the chance to see what the future looks like mm-hmm. and so that if we can come back here and bring a little bit of what we've seen outside mm-hmm. like and bring it back here and share with the people and the communities that raised us like why don't we do that right so what's that what does that look like for you guys like what is something i guess from the outside that you want to bring back here if you were elected well Is it okay if I stop? You go first. <laughs> so, go. before I returned back to Indo, uh-huh. I wanted to implement my understanding about political fundraising uh-huh. that is hugely uh, important in the U.S. Western in the U.S. culture of um, fundraising, um, raising money for elected officials, uh-huh. for presidential candidates, uh-huh. and I saw that maybe if it's not accepted now in Indo, it is going to be the future to bring that transparency and accountability and anti-corruption. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah, I live it. And, I um, will catch up with you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then um, I actually uh, connected with one of a political candidate, mm-hmm. quite senior, mm-hmm. and um, he had an interest in my idea and my concept, mm-hmm. and I did develop it as an app. And um, after much of dialogues, consultations, um, getting approval, att- um, creating several dinner meetings with this political candidates, um, and which is a huge slum of money because mm-hmm. creating these events. Um, when the election season happened, the team copied my app that is already officially launched mm-hmm. and create a website version for themselves. Uh huh. And that hit me. Mm-hmm. I cried. instantly and i was thank god thank you lord jesus christ for showing me and um when i was just looking at my instagram like there was this post saying like this political candidate did that and mm-hmm. that made me reflect again why am i here mm-hmm. if at the end of the day the voice of my my ideas and my concept is always going to be taken by someone who thinks they can abuse that um That power, you know, peop- mm-hmm. and this person is going to run for a higher office. Mm-hmm. You, do you want to be in that kind of country? You know, you you you're, you're basically you're doing it for your own personal mm-hmm. greed, personal need instead of for the nation. Mm-hmm. And so, but after that whole experience happened, I sat back. You know, I calm again. Mm-hmm. You know. And I realized that ya udah, oke, okay, ini satu pelajaran. Jadi di Indo itu beda. Mm-hmm. Mereka itu enggak mereka tuh gampang sekali plagiarize. Mm-hmm. Mereka pinter lah, pinter mm-hmm. untuk cara maneuveringnya itu dan ya lo harus belajar untuk bisa berhati-hati aja dengan siapa lo berinteraksi. Mm-hmm. Emang politik kejam ya politik itu kejam. Mm-hmm. Jadi ke depannya gue lebih sekarang udah lebih tertata aja ke depannya gue mau gimana, apa ide apa yang gue akan raih ke depan ini walaupun gue duduk tidak duduk, gue pursue another education, ya gue akan find the right person and it's always not very, again never write the right person yeah. tapi I'm just gonna be more uh, more smart idea mm-hmm. tapi it hurt me I cried I I was mad I I wanted to get I just wanna like sue this person but I I, I did not do that route mm-hmm. yeah. you need a law degree <laughs> what? 
Do you need a lawyer? <laughs> Marsha, uh, not me, no. someone else. Me, itu. Yeah. Jadi itulah. Yeah. For me, I think um yeah, that gave me some thought actually when you were answering yeah. I was trying to process my own thoughts and feelings. I think for me because uh when I came back, I actually had the outlet to pursue the professional side of me. So in a way that got a lot of the kind of like uh, adjustment steam off. Mm. Um, so I was, I kind of wanted, I, 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 yeah, I mean like when you return from overseas, I think the first two to three years you will have a lot of uh, uncomfortable moments, uh, anger maybe or confusion. Uh, and... I when I came back, I mean, I had my degree, I had my work experience, and I kind of wanted to make a uh, home a better place. I, I was starting with mm. my own label, and mm-hmm. I got to a point where it could not be just me and my friend mm-hmm. to do it on the side. I had to kind of like do it full time, but but my parents were kind of not happy with me staying in London, so I decided to go back to set up a workshop mm. and to kind of like do it myself. Mm-hmm. here to kind of export and along the way I found out that the uh, educational the the vocational standard was woefully lacking mm. I mean like I was trained to basically supervise production mm. for uh, like 500 700 pieces of clothing mm. how to like how to verify that everything's secure mm. safe to wear um, to spec to the design uh, suits the, defi- the design spec and when I got here you know sometimes I will tell them okay you know you have a pattern you make the pattern okay I fit it on someone and it works and I use the same pattern on the same fabric type different colors and they would do it completely different and then you know they wouldn't have a clue where they went wrong so in a way that was for me it was like something that angered me a lot as well as well as the you know like service standards etc so when i get into politics i think it's a little bit different because for you jesseline it's really you know a lot of things hitting you in the face oh yeah for me the adjustment is in being strategic mm-hmm. um I, I did mention earlier about my um, like plastic collection program mm-hmm. uh, in being strategic. So yeah, that's quite fun in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, people say uh, plagiarism is in, in fashion. They used to say some believe that plagiarism is a form of flattery. Uh, flattery, yeah. but yeah. Uh, you know. When you have the brain, it's okay. You will be able to find things that suit your fa- your suit yeah. your passion, and yeah. you will be able to like have different programs instead of like you know trying to find interesting things from everyone else and you copy them and you kind of lose yourself in the process. You mm-hmm. can you you can still be yours. I think this is the value of like the, the education we have is right. that we can still be ourselves. Yeah, we can bounce back. You know, we can bounce back. Yeah. I mean, like people can like try to steal things yeah. from us, yeah. but um uh, we can we still have the capacity to be happy yeah uh-huh. it's not to, and, and then yeah, yeah and then yeah. and then uh-huh. to kind of pick us uh, pick, pick ourselves us up, yeah. up and yeah. to roll along again yeah uh-huh. that i agree mm. okay so what? more resilience okay how did you adjust your podcast how did i what? adjust your podcast because like you know things like this in internationally is we mm-hmm. loved it you know because it allows you to kind of speak freely right yeah, how did yeah, you yeah. adjust that well you know, i yeah how did I adjust that to the the culture in Indonesia? Oh, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I don't. So she she is she is a breakthrough. I don't. You're and breakthrough. that's kind of like the whole purpose, right? Is to like again like the whole mission of mm-hmm. bringing back like yeah, like li- a li- little parts of like our mm-hmm. bringing back parts of our ideals and our beliefs, like our experience. No, you know? not I wouldn't really put it that way i think it's just you know to be part of a globalized mm-hmm. world like we all take a little bit from one another you know and this is like mm-hmm. the little bit of i guess western yeah, the western, western world and like right. the american world that i'm bringing back here and so like i guess politically does that apply to you guys like mm-hmm. you know in your political campaigns of like the values mm-hmm. and ideals that you guys grew up with 
internationally and like bringing a little bit of that back here does oh oh it does i have to expand <laughs> yes <laughs> um i a lot i mean a lot uh particularly not it's the american jewish people who are my mentor mm -hmm. um who um shout out to all my um jewish imas mm -hmm. <laughs> moms they're they taught they were they're very heavily involved in u.s politics and they taught me a lot of the um the ways to take care of one's feeling but at the same time constantly thrive mm -hmm. your passion your your what you like mm -hmm. they always um teach me to always learn don't mm -hmm. stop learning yeah don't stop listening to mm -hmm. people uh and try to learn their their back again culture mm -hmm. yeah so don't think that you're superior than them mm -hmm. never ever think that way you gotta humble yourself yeah and so this campaign tell me about empathy and humble mm. because i am quite before anything i'm quite pretentious you know sometimes i can be very you know like i yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That. so this campaign really taught me like justin in this cycle the people are your lord in a way not mm -hmm. lord i want to say it yeah. your boss your boss yeah, yeah. your boss you We're work for, you work for the people you work for the people so it means that you need to you need to adjust that you know mm -hmm. so the people comes first you're second mm -hmm. and that's the most expensive lesson mm -hmm. yeah that you can get yeah and that helps you become stronger resilient as marcia mm -hmm. said mm -hmm. and helps you realize that your western education is not a waste mm -hmm. but you just have to modify it or save it for the next adventure mm -hmm. so that's why maybe this election i i only use like 10 percent, 20 percent of what i was i was taught mm -hmm. but i am now focusing into another different field still in the political field right. that can help use that skill that i have and it's more 100 mm -hmm. percent. and you can't stop now you still connect with people meet new people you know and you'll find your own pathway i don't know if i'm making sense but. i learn things as well like um you know like one of the platforms that i use is um uh, renewable energy like sustainable electricity mm -hmm. and um what's humbling is that you know like i had to invent or i had to develop uh not invent i had to develop a new set of a vocabulary to explain mm -hmm what it feels like to ex to get the same feelings mm -hmm. that you know to share the worries that i have with them mm -hmm. and to ask them to bring about a consensus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if anything i i don't it's not so much that i i don't feel that you know like maybe it's kind of a bit i'm so sorry colonial <laughs> colonialist or post-colonialist to think that okay you know like coming back from overseas mm -hmm. you're kind of all done up this is what a lot of indonesians think you mm -hmm. know you, you come back from overseas you're better educated etc mm -hmm. more resilient probably but uh better educated mm -hmm. i think education is something that i believe it's something that's ongoing mm -hmm. develop yeah, being developed in you right so even now i think this is what Jason said as well we learn a lot from our experience mm -hmm. um like interacting with people mm -hmm. um not just parroting hey guys not just parroting mm -hmm. what we believe mm -hmm. but first trying to listen to them parroting what we believe mm -hmm. but bringing empathy trying to understand their problems mm -hmm. that's the learning process and then the ability that we bring back is the ability of being able to con communicate with people in their language, in their mm -hmm. mindset. Because this is what I found out when I was doing like the questions, mm -hmm. the, the Q&A practice sessions in mm -hmm. Miss Indonesia. A lot of people give parroting answers. And I, I could feel there was an unease in the air, but nobody really referred to it because mm -hmm. it was like, 
uh, the question I think was like what made you proud as an Indonesian and then everyone was saying things like oh Zamrud Katulistiwa you know uh, kaya dalam sumber daya alam and I was like mm-hmm. uh, hello like you're supposed to, that's kind of like primary school level explanation I mean you're supposed to be like explaining at a different level at some you know like with uh, more finesse mm-hmm. in a way with more empathy in a way that people can relate mm-hmm. with more realness to it and that was actually like that was the start of the journey when I learned that um, technically we are actually learning from our process from mm-hmm. our you know like candidacy process mm-hmm. uh, but what we bring back is the ability of uh, communicating ourselves without parroting yeah mm-hmm. thank you guys for being here thank you Inda. thank you yes. for giving us a voice on your platform yes. and like comment and fucking subscribe you cunts and that is it you guys bye bye bye